So it's good to have my uh, camera back in the car so I can basically talk and drive. And um, what I'd like to talk about really is Foundlip's house, why I'm doing it, and what is the opportunity. Well, the pain is this, is that basically we live in an unsustainable um, environment. Our homes in suburbia is completely unsustainable. So if we are if we are to change this unsustainability, right, and provide transform communities, then we need to have a mechanism to do that. And the problem is, is that cost of transformation is something that currently is imposed on the owner of the house. And that's where Foundup's house really comes in because with Foundup House, we take homes, we, we treat them very much as someone treats their car with Uber in the sense that, hey, we can show you how to turn your house into a revenue generator. Now, I should say this is Foundup Houses right now ideally are going to work in areas where there are where there's high um, real estate value. Places like London, Los Angeles, and, you know, Silicon Valley, New York, uh, Washington DC. Because ultimately what how we make our money is basically using the Airbnb people coming in who can't afford to be in downtown New York, Manhattan, but want to be in Manhattan. And ultimately, we provide them the mechanism or the way for them to be downtown in a way by creating kind of a dorm experience that's highly managed in the sense that we have systems in place to manage that experience to ensure that it's clean and the experience is, you know, is, um, uh, what's the word, beneficial. So... The idea is you take a space which has which may cost you know four thousand dollars a month to run, and you turn it into a space that's generating ten thousand, fifteen thousand a month by renting out each bed in that space to individuals, and then we then and also we convert that space so we're producing our own food, we're we're lowering our own cost, um, and becoming uh, a less impactful, impacted area on our systems. Because it's simple science, if, if I can basically keep planting tomatoes from tomatoes I eat, then I'll have more tomatoes than I need to buy. And the same thing goes for potatoes, the same thing goes for, you know, um, all the other foods that ultimately we can grow. Now there are limitations on what we can grow in the space. So imagine in the future people saying, hey, they have that second house and saying, I want that to be a fountain house and generating income for myself. So what's next? Well, once we complete the house and we put the hydroponics in, we put the renewable energy in, we bring our own food, um, it's part of a kind of a um, um, a network of sustainable homes in America, then ultimately what we can do is auction off these houses. And this is where the person who owns the house or has the house gets their return on the house. If they have that property and they want to increase the value of that property, they partner with us because we're going to increase the value of the property because all the things we do the property is going to increase the value. And all we ask is this, is when we decide to auction it off, we auction it off within our network. And I believe it's kind of a Kickstarter. We'll kickstart off and sell the house via Kickstarter and allow many people to come in and own the house. Um, and that house then becomes part of Found Us. And we manage it, we run it, and we keep doing that, keep repeating the cycle, keep repeating the cycle. So that's the vision 
behind FoundUps and how we're going to grow FoundUps. In every house we create and complete, it all of a sudden we remove that, that property and it becomes a positive instead of a negative for the, you know, for the planet. And we repeat that enough times, then maybe we can do enough good to actually start turning around some of the problems we have. That's one side of FoundUps. Another side of FoundUps is, is that at the FoundUps house, we're launching startups and other businesses uh, or ultimately projects of the FoundUp house called FoundUps. They could be cleaners, they could be shampoos, they could be anything. They could be growing the eggs, growing the vegetables, making those available to the neighborhood. You see, my vision of FoundUps is this, is that we get away from the idea of customers, instead think of people um, as stakeholders because the planet has no customers. All the planet has are stakeholders. And the sooner we realize that, that I'm not a customer of this thing, I'm not, you know, right now the way we treat water is I'm renting. I'm a customer of water. I'm renting that water. And, and maybe in the future I'll be renting the air. Um, you know, um, I have to pay taxes and everything else. Just, I mean, ultimately means I'm renting the land that I, that I, have, that I own. So <laughs> it's important for us to change these systems and, and create a utopia, a paradise on Earth by making everything we do in harmony of the planet. And the first stage of that is living sustainably. My name is Michael Trout. You may have seen me on Animal Planet, and um, I'm in Silicon Valley launching something called Fathom Houses. They're kind of like the Airbnb for sustainable living that anyone can launch. So if you want to launch a Fathom House, you can visit fathoms.com and learn more. Become a stakeholder to help support the vision because ultimately we're bringing about more than just the vision of sustainability. We're bringing about and introducing a new business model called Fathoms that will replace the startup. And ultimately, if I'm right, we could just change and save the planet. If I'm wrong, I don't see any future of the planet personally. I hope I'm wrong. But I know that without FoundUps, we have little hope for saving our planet. So we have to change from a selfish business model, the startup business model, to a selfless business model, which is the founder business model. Thanks.